Welcome back to Electronics Career Questions and Suggestions. Today's subject is going to be troubleshooting. And learning how to troubleshoot is something that you need to do when going into the electronics field or any field that involves it, stuff like this. And basic way in troubleshooting is using some of your senses, such as your smell, visual, and touch and hearing. Strangely enough, you can hear when components are going bad. Hearing is often a, a big recognition of stuff that's not going to be going well. You can hear a component going bad. You have a lot of issues. So let's go over this circuit board here. What can you see that's bad visually looking at this you can see that these components here are visual you know they're broken you can see that there's a burnt mark on this circuit board right here you can also see the components over there are broken and burnt and had caught on fire from a different view you would see that these two components here capacitors are peaked up in the center and that means that there's an indication that they're actually bad um capacitor also with other components emit an odor with these going bad the electrolytic fluid smell like fish they have a very fishy organic smell you would know that these other components here do smell when they burn circuit boards are fiber they're a fiber board basically this just smells like it's a carbon, that's all it is, and it's a carbon build up, and it just smells like a burnt board, and that's all it's gonna smell like. And you wanna know what these smell like when they catch on fire. It'll happen when you get into it. Um, I think that's all the visual things you can just see, you know, looking for corrosion, stuff that catch on fire, but it's pertaining to this second board, that's what you're gonna find out. And I mentioned touch. So when you find something like this to scorch the board, when you replace this component, you power it back on, you want to touch the IC chips and see if they get hot. You know, that's one indicator that you can use. If you don't want to touch it with your finger and not burn your fingertip, you can also use a thermal gun, you know, an infrared thermometer. That's just, just your basic way to doing that, I guess. And lastly, my best tool that I use is an ohmmeter. You can always, you know, that's your go-to. And you would say, lastly, if you're an experienced technician, it's going to be your oscilloscope. But I find a lot of technicians new into the field don't even use a oscilloscope. Don't know how to use an oscilloscope. And never turn one on. The only thing they ever use is an ohmmeter. So let's go over the ohmmeter. This is the ohm sign. Basic electronics here. You short the lead together, you have zero ohms. You are visually looking on a scale that says. This is bad, right? So that component shorted. Obviously, it's got some damage done to it. Let's take a look at this one. What's it doing? Why is it increasing the ohms? So the capacitor in circuit, it's charging the capacitor. Your voltmeter, your multimeter, it's going to be putting out voltages. That's what the that's how it works. It puts out voltages and measures the differences. So right now, it's putting out a voltage to charge up the capacitor, and that's why you see a change, an increase or a decrease of resistance. As much as I can charge up the capacitor, I can discharge the capacitor and charge it back up again. That's how that works. Don't let that fool you. So using an ohmmeter, you're just checking for shorts or low ohmage. 
If a component is showing 20 ohms and it's not supposed to show 20 ohms, that means it's bad. If it shows 200 ohms and it's not supposed to show 200 ohms, that means it's bad. Audio amplifiers typically would have two sides to it, so you could compare one side versus the other. If you don't always have that lock, you can, you know, take the component out of the circuitry and look at it. If it still shows like 200 ohms and you suspect that it's bad, then replace it. It's that simple. Additional to, you know, visual touch, smell, and hearing, and using the ohmmeter, you're going to be using the voltmeter. Everything has an input and output, digitally and analog. You expect voltages in, you should expect voltages out. You won't, you won't always have a such a clean view of that with a voltmeter, you know, using an audio amplifier, but you should still be able to take and measure something that's going to be the output. Same way with digital chips, IC chips. You either want to have zero or five volts, unless it's a trigger and you might have something different. You know, if you're not having zero or five volts and you have 1.5 volts or two point whatever, and it's not a trigger circuit, then you know that's something there is either drawing it down or not putting enough voltage to it. Just things you will learn over time and that's what you need to do is gain a lot of experience in learning this over time. Hopefully this helped you out. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. We'll see you next time.